Just the light again if you want. We're going to talk a little bit about some factors that you should consider about on your farm. For example, if we know there's a disease going around, we want to do a lot more biosecurity than you know we regularly would. So that's a factor we need to consider when we think about our biosecurity plans. Are you next to water? Are there a lot of shooting preserves going around there? Are you near birds? Uh, that last picture of the what you call that the goose sanitarium? If that's next to you, you've got a big problem you need to consider and worry about. Other things. Do you live on your farm? If you don't live on your farm, do you have an employee that lives on the farm that keeps an eye on things? So you know what's going on on your farm. It's surprising to know what goes on farms. I've had people say they know what goes on their farm and just stick a game camera out there and see what really goes on. It's kind of an interesting thing to do. Do your neighbors have poultry? You know, now I'm not too worried about the picture Bill showed of his neighbor with the birds that contained and all that, but you know, if people have chickens running around their backyard, they're running across the fences and everything else, that can be an issue. And how accessible is your production site to a public road? There's one right down here on the road, that kind of that brand new one. It's kind of concerning when it's right there on a road like that. You know, you're going to want to take some measures to make sure people can't get in your house or, or you don't pick up disease from outside. So. Having shown you those, some of the things we strongly, we strongly recommend you do is visitor logs. Some companies do, some companies don't. Signage, limited access, wild bird exclusion. We'll, we'll talk about this as we go through it. Start off with visitor logs. How many people have a visitor log? Anybody? Okay. In your visitor log, what about sticking some biosecurity clothes? You know what? That way there's always there. If somebody shows up that needs to go on your farm, they're going to stop there to sign in. There are clothes there. Now when you get clothes, you've all seen them, right? We all know what they are. Here's some, you know, if you're just going to walk around outside, some short boots. I like these because they don't sweat you to death if you're just going to be outside, but they're not good for going in a house. If you're going to go in a house, you definitely want to go to the higher boots. Along with that, you're going to want to use a... Oh yeah, you can use you can use the clear ones. I don't like the clear ones. They're not as big. They're hard to get on. They're, so be careful too, because remember, you don't know what size the person is that's coming to your farm. You order these bad boys, 3XL. I'm telling you, it's the only way to go. You can get them on. If you're small, you still can get them on. It's not going to hurt anything. It's still going to cover you. But remember, you want to size them for who might be coming on your farm. You want to use a head net. Notice I didn't say head. Head net. And let's see, where's the gloves? We also have some gloves. So these are some things that you can just stick in your box. If you don't have a box, you want to put one out there, go get the biggest one you got. You can put a few pairs in there. You can make it easy. Make it easy for yourself. These are things you want to consider when you do it. All right. Again, signs. Signs don't stop diseases, but they stop. Well, they don't stop people either. But they'll make people think that's what we're after. We want people to think and consider what they're doing. Uh, here's another sign. If you need one of these, we have some of those with us. Uh, we just got a bunch more printed up there on the table back there, and I have some more in my truck. So we have some of those for you if you want them. There's a place you can put your phone number. So if someone does need to come on the farm, put your phone number on there, write it with a permanent marker, and it's there. Let's see. Limiting access. Put a, put a chain across your driveway. Make people think. Make them stop. What's really good about that is if you do that right next to your mailbox, they're going to have to stop by the mailbox, which has a place for them to sign in, and a cover all to put on. So you can catch all that in one little easy swell. Another reason we want people to sign in, I guess I didn't say earlier, is we want to keep track if there ever was a disease on your farm. We would know who has visited, so we'd know where else to look and what we need to watch for. One more thing you can do, uh, let's see, right there. See that? That's a game camera. And when you pull on the farm, that takes a picture of your vehicle and you and then emails it or texts it to anybody that's on the list. So when you go on the farm, they know you're there. So if you have a farm that's out of the way, that's a good way to do it to protect, you know, to protect your assets. You have a lot there. If you have a back entrance to your farm that you don't use, put a gate up. I'm amazed. I come from out west. Everything's fences and gates. I, I, I tell you, it just blows my mind there's no fences out here. It's just really different for me. What about wild birds? How many of you have seen that? That's a no-no. Not only wild birds, I mean, look at that there. Or right here, end doors left open. It's kind of funny, as we were driving over here, as I was watching, I saw two farms that way. Just between Princess Anne and here on the highways. 
when we leave those open, we allow the birds to go in and out, and there's a chance to bring something in. Granted, there's no birds there right then, but you know what? Every ounce of prevention is very good. So we want to watch that. Another one we want to do is rodent control. There's our model again. He's signing autographs I hear afterwards, just so you know. So we want to take care of checking our traps. Make sure that we use a good rotation of baits. Make sure we do things appropriately. Uh, I always wear gloves. One, you don't want to handle the poison, but two, when you start opening these up, there's a lot of snakes and spiders, so it's kind of a good thing. Uh, rodent control. One of, not rodent control. Back on rodent control, I should have said, I was looking for a picture. I actually have a picture we took at a farm where the rat is drinking out of a nipple drinker. I mean, yeah, you just don't, it blows your mind. I went on a farm one day with, uh, it was a live production manager, was showing me one of his pristine farms. We walked about, oh, from here to the back wall down the house, and I look up and I see a rat drop out of the ceiling. Roof rats. You all don't have them out here. They're in the south. They're bad. But we do have rats. Think about it. They've been here before. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing what they can do. Beetles. Beetles are bad. Beetles can take disease from one flock to the next. We need to make sure we have a good beetle control program and do whatever you can to keep them down. Uh, Well-managed foot baths. Now, I like foot baths, but they have to be managed correctly. And by that, I mean they can't have a lot of foreign debris in there. If they've got a lot of organic matter, you're not really working very good because the disinfectants can't work. You need to make sure that they're clean, that your shoes are clean. If you have big chunks on your feet, you step in and go in, and those chunks are still on your shoes, you didn't disinfect that. You might have got a little bit on the outside, but that inside of that chunk and all the underside is all still there. Foot baths are great, but we need to make sure they're maintained properly. Another thing about footwear, find footwear that doesn't have much tread on it. Now this is a really nice one here, except for wintertime when it's icy. But think about it. We want to make sure we don't track stuff around. A smooth surface isn't going to do that. It's much easier to take care of. Another thing to consider, having dedicated shoes in each house. Um, I, I did that when I was a grower, but it's because I don't know, I was just lazy. But you keep a pair of shoes in each house, they never go outside, you don't have to worry about tracking disease in. You just slip those shoes on, go, slip your shoes on, come out, you know, and that way, plus I had farm dedicated shoes that never left the farm. So by doing that, you really can isolate your thing as you go down. Is that for everybody? No, but it's an idea of the next step you can take in your program as you, def as you define what you're gonna do on your farm. Remember, the more that you do to prevent, the more it is, the better your farm will produce, or, well, not really produce, but it can help your production, but it will keep you safe, because Dr. Ritter is going to explain to you what happens when it's not. Uh, waterfowl, use caution. You know, I, I use a big waterfowl hunter. I came from the Pacific Flyway. I would hunt 90, 95 days a year. I didn't have birds at that point in my life. You know, since I've had birds, I've gone very seldom. In fact, I haven't been gone since I've been to Delmarva. If you're going to go, Take precautions. Realize that you're working with one of the vectors that a lot of those carry some low path or other type of disease you can take back. Make sure you clean. Make sure your clothes are disinfected. Make sure you change, shower, everything you can before you go to the farm. Here's that stock we were talking about earlier, that picture. Bill didn't get there quick enough. This was the spot with all the muck and everybody knocked off their shoes, but it rained, so it doesn't show up now. But again, think about where you're going. I was uh, reading somewhere, they were talking about how AI was spreading or disease, and they, sat, they finally tracked it down to the barber. They were all going into the barber every week and talking. Think about where you're going. Change your clothes before you go. Change your shoes. Wash your hands. Watch out for farm ponds. We, got these, you know, we have these ponds we're building for storm water on our, on our property. We need to find ways to keep the geese off. That's something that you know, Bill and I have been talking about. We're starting to talk with some of the other agencies and look for ways that we can do that. I don't think anything poops as much as a goose, in all honesty, they're, they're bad. Birds, you know, we don't think about it, but you know, their droppings are everywhere. We walk through them every day, so we want to make sure when we go in our houses, we don't have those on the bottom of our feet anymore. And again, washing hands, this is something that we often overlook, but if you think about it, what do you pick up all those diseased and dead birds with? Your hands. Are we washing them between houses? Now, we probably don't have a sink and soap out there to do that with, but you know, we can stick one of these little uh, disinfectant stations or get a bottle of disinfectant, set it there, and then just wash it on your hands, wipe them off, go to the next place. And again, another one, wash all your equipment. 
Uh, interesting data out there on ILT, you're 13 times less likely to get ILT if you wash equipment coming on your farm. So washing equipment has been shown to be a good thing. Now is it going to cost more? Yes, because we've got to take time. Is it going to be easy to do? No. You know, personally, when we would do this, they would always show up clean, we would disinfect them. They'd work the farm, then we would clean them, we would go to the next farm, disinfect and So you want to watch how you do that, but it can be done. Again, the absolutes, no backyard poultry. Farm dedicated clothes and footwear, no unauthorized visitors. Visitors wear protective clothing and approved and well-managed BMPs, best management practices for your dead. Okay. That said, I do want to address one more thing because I did see we have a lot of allied industry and government. What about you guys? Your visitors on the farm, what should you be doing? It's a good question. First off, Ask yourself, do I really need to go on the farm? If you don't, don't go. It's that simple. If you do need to go on the farm, call ahead. Let the grower know you're coming and when you're going to be there. Give them the chance to meet with you and listen to what they have to say for their biosecurity. If they want you enclosed, have the clothes. Do what the farmer wants. It's their farm. Only visit the part of the farm you need to. For example, if you're going out to inspect a manure shed, there's no need to go in a building. Do what you need to do and leave. If you need to go fix a fan in, in house one, don't be going in house three. Just go where you need to go, take care of what you need to go, and then leave. And again, try and visit as few farms as possible. Um, I know right now USDA's got a limit for their employees of one farm per day, and then they've got to shower, clean, and do all kinds of stuff, wash their vehicles. So we want to try and do as good a problem as we can, as good a job as we can, and not transmit disease. Another thing, if you don't need your vehicle, don't drive down on the farm, park out by the mailbox. Walk down. I'm not going to kill you. Like me, I could probably use the exercise, but again, it's another step. You park out there, you're not coming on that farm, you're not bringing anything on the farm, when you leave, you're not going to take anything away with you. If you do have to go on the farm, I know this sounds really funny, park somewhere on the grass and don't park in front of the fans. Now, we say that, but we have to say that because it's happened. I mean, to us it's common sense. Don't park in front of a fan. Why would you do that? Also, make sure you keep your windows up and your doors locked. Not locked. Shut. Man, I said that wrong. Think about today. Hot. We don't want to park out there on a farm with our windows down, up. You know, it's going to make our car hot. But if we leave them down, what happens? Flies. We fill our truck full of flies. We go somewhere else. What did we just do? We took everything with us. Um, I actually know some service techs in some places they actually carry fly spray in their trucks and they spray inside their trucks after they leave every farm to kill everything that goes with them. Again, if you drive on the farm, make sure you wash your vehicle before you go to another farm. That's simple. Or at least clean the, the tires and the parts of the truck off that you can. Let's see. Wear protective clothing. Now, if you're not going in the farm, you might get away with just wearing boots. If you're just walking out there to look at a manure shed, you're walking out there to check the site for inspection or something, wear what you need to. I mean, if you're not going to the house, I wouldn't put on the coveralls. You'd kill yourself on a day like today. So use, use common sense when you do this. Take precautions what you do. But if you're going inside a building or a production area inside the house, make sure you're wearing the full kit. It shouldn't be too bad in there because you're going to have the air, the air. I mean, the cool, cool spells will be running. You'll have the fans. Man, air conditioning. Anyway, remember the goal, folks, prevent the spread of disease. That is the goal. That is what we're all about. In doing so, we can keep our birds healthy and happy. And with that, there you go. And I'll turn the time over to Dr. Ray.